You're a crew, right? Right. You're excited? Very. There you go.
ID and the password, and they can take over the race. The whole race is on, on a website. It's on a server somewhere. So there's no paper. So it's all set to transfer it over. And, and, and if I go, so then thinking about it. So if I go, then uh, Jacob will take over after I'm gone. Welcome back. This is my second year coordinating the medical team. Uh, it was a real, it's been a real interesting challenge. We have a few people who promised they'd help out. Before I get started, I want to do something. I used to participate in a bike -a-thon. We used to ride our bikes from Los Angeles to Mono Lake, and we did something every year that was kind of cool. Could everybody stand up for a second? Let's be standing, stay standing. Okay. Give yourselves a round of applause. They're all here. <laughs> group several times. You'll notice we have no scales here. We're not doing any weighing. That's, that's old school. We don't do that anymore. Marty Hoffman, some of you might be familiar with him, medical director up in Western States, one of the best MDs in doing research on ultramarathons and endurance athletes, has determined, based on anecdotal and evidence-based medicine, it's just not an accurate way to judge fitness. Not to mention the people who put rocks in their in their pockets. Try to So we don't do that anymore, which is a good thing. Um, the AC100 has no policy about requiring or recommending hydration or food. We believe in letting you drink to your thirst when you're thirsty and eat when you're hungry. I'm not going to advise you how to, because you guys obviously know better what you're doing than I do, but any kind of regimented thing just doesn't seem to work for people. They either get hyponatremic, they get dehydrated if they're doing it the wrong way, drink when you're thirsty, eat when you're hungry, use the toilet when you have to, and you'll be fine. And the only caveat to that is if you're not used to taking salt tablets, um, I don't want to take an editorial stance here, but again, evidence-based medicine and anecdotal evidence, more people have problems taking in too much salt. And I will leave it at that. Um, if you're going to take salt, if you are going to take salt or any kind of supplement like salt, please drink extra water when you do so. The last thing you want to do is get hypernatremic on the course. It's a horrible thing. You don't want to do it. It's not fun. Uh, you basically you get really you get lightheaded, disoriented. You feel like you're dehydrated, but the problem is you're you're drinking too much water. You're flushing out all of the nutrients and minerals that your body needs. And so if you drink just too much water and you don't take some some electrolytes, but not necessarily salt. Salt is not sodium is not the end all and be all to the electrolytes. So well, it all it, it's it's you know it's just too personal. If you haven't urinated for a long time, you should be drinking more water. That's probably a sign that you're drinking too much water. <laughs> <laughs> or you might have another issue that we, that you might, I don't know. <laughs> there, are, there are conditions where people have to urinate more frequently. I don't want to get into that right now. But aren't the symptoms the same as being as oversalt and undersalt, the same symptoms you get? You get the same symptoms as being oversalt and under yeah, so, yeah, at first you do, yeah. The, right. best, the best way to find out if you're, if you're oversalt is you taste salt. If you can taste it, then you're oversalt. It's yeah. bad to be oversalt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anybody not? <laughs> um, rattles, real, real quickly, rattlesnakes are, are kind of a minor hobby of mine. Um, <laughs> rattlesnakes have no interest in human beings. They really don't. We're too big. They can't eat us. They don't eat that much anyway, but they certainly couldn't. They're not. The idea of a rattlesnake attacking a human being is, is almost unheard of. The only time that you're going to probably have a, a problem with a rattlesnake is if you corner it, if you're abusive towards it, if you're aggressive towards the snake. 
of rattlesnake bites in the in North America are males in their 20s <laughs> with alcohol involved. <laughs> Very true. Males, 20s, alcohol. And guess where most of the bites are? In their hands. Because they go, hey, look, there's a snake. Hold my beer. <laughs> if you see a snake, you come across a snake, stop. Look around. Give the snake somewhere to go. 90, 9, 999 times out of a thousand, the snake will make his or her way out, and you can continue on. Okay? If there is an incident with a snake, all of our medical people know how to deal with it, and we will deal with it appropriately. Um, and this is everybody's favorite. If you appear to, to the medical staff to be altered, <laughs> which is how most of you will look throughout the day, <laughs> <laughs> but if you look really altered, we're going to ask you three questions. I'm not going to tell you what they are. <laughs> I, all of, everything I've been telling you guys has already been relayed to the medical team, so don't, you're not going to get over on these people. Okay? But one key thing, when we're talking to you, it's because the trained person who's at the medical station has seen something in your behavior something in the way you're moving around or not moving around that has caused them some level of concern. We're not here to slow you down. We never want to pull a runner from a race for medical reasons. Believe me, we do not want to do that. We want to help you finish. So when we come up to you and say, hey, how you doing? I'm John, I'm a medic. Do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? First, it'll be weird because I'm going to be out driving. So that's see me, that's what I'm <laughs> But if it's another medic, just listen to the questions, answer them to the best of your ability, and listen to what we have to say. And most of the time it'll be, you know what, why don't you take an extra couple of minutes, drink a little extra water, have you eaten something, you know, that kind of, it'll be like that, because what happens is blood sugar levels rise and fall and peak and valley, and you can look crappy one minute and fantastic a few minutes later. That doesn't normally happen. Fantastic. But, you know what? Um, will the AMA forms be available in an emergency? Yes. <laughs> we have forms. However, if we tell you that to our, in our opinion, you should drop and you insist on continuing, you have to sign a form that's AMA means against medical advice. That means you are you are continuing after having been told by a trained medical personnel staff person that you shouldn't. If you have a compound fracture and you want to keep running, we're going to tell you don't do it. If you want to, okay, but if you can't sign the form, you'll be dropped. <laughs> makes it easier for us, makes it easier for you. And then lastly, well, second to last, if we're talking to you, we need to talk to you, to the runner. I need to ask you a question. I don't need your crew members to go, you know, he, he's, he's always like that. <laughs> okay? So, and, and again, I've talked to the medical team. They all know this. So if we appear like we're ignoring your crew members, it's because they aren't running with you. They don't know what that you might have just fallen or had an issue, whatever. And again, we're, our job is not to pull you out of the race. So if we tell you you should pull out of the race, it's <coughs> because we are concerned that you are causing possibly permanent damage to yourself for one reason or another. It's the only reason we want to pull you out of the race. Okay? Everybody believe me? All right. Uh, lastly, the best thing you can do after the race is go home. <laughs> after the awards show. Anybody have any questions? On behalf of the Forest Service, I want to welcome you all to the uh, Angeles National Forest and the new San Gabriel Mountains National Monument, which for the past three years we've been working on a management plan. And on the 1st of October, that's going to go into effect and the monument will be official. So I've got uh, some handouts. Um, there's some information on the 
forest and the monument, uh, you know, things like, uh, you probably don't know that we have five road wilderness areas in the 1,000 square mile uh, area that comprises the forest and the monument. Uh, we've got peaks over 10,000 feet. Um, it's just a, a, a great number of uh, things you can do when you recreate in the forest. And we invite you to come back and do that. Um, so that's one better word for it. Andy? the first time I got ahead of her. It's unbelievable. Hey, go get him. Oh, hey, you'll see me on the next downhill. You're, my, you're like incredible. Up here at Baden-Powell, Angeles Crest 100, Ultra Marathon. Look at the view we got up here, man. That's great. It's about, you know, 9 a.m. I didn't have a good sleep the last couple of days, so the first part's been pretty hard. It's nice up here. Race, I can just enjoy the view and take it easy. But, uh, you know, I didn't get going here. Oh. <sighs> 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 
Just say, are you going to finish? Black Widow, may I show up in the video? Right up there, too. All right, buddy. Hey, let's get the lights. Yeah. <laughs> We're at the air station. He's going to pace his bed to the finish line. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right.